Hello and welcome to a queer lit reading video. My name is Jess and today we are going to be starting this video with Going by Coastal by Dahlia Aldler. I'm not sure if that's an R at the end. I'm not sure how to pronounce this author's name. So this is the first book that has arrived. I actually ordered, I think it's five or six books. I as soon as I was paid at the end of last month because we're currently in July and I've been sat waiting for my queer books to arrive to film this video we're also starting this video in pajamas which you will find is a trend on this channel it's more like a pajama club this, <laughs> this channel <laughs> because I'm constantly in pajamas I was planning on kind of doing my hair or doing something with my hair today, looking presentable. I woke up and I just wanted a pyjama day, which is what I want most days. So we're here, we're in our pyjamas. I do need to do something with my hair. I did get it cut recently, but as I'm growing it out, it just feels like a constant mess. So this is what we're working with today. I went for this little kind of quiff thing and I don't know if we're regretting it. <laughs> So let's have a look at the books I purchased for the purpose of this video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven books, including this one. This is the only one to arrive so far. So this book actually came in the post today. I have, I did start reading some other books, um, which I haven't filmed, but they will be in my July wrap up because I was just waiting to start this video, especially because last month was Pride Month for some countries. In the UK, it's Pride Month this month, and I don't know how soon I'm going to be able to read through these books and get this video up. Going by Coastal is a fictional book about, I don't know what the main character is called, uh, Natalia? Natalia Fox is 20, has 24 hours to make the biggest choice of her life. Stay home in NYC for the summer with her dad or spend with her basically estranged mum in LA, knowing this is best chance to fix their relationship. So I do believe you get the kind of two different timelines if she makes a choice to go stay with her dad or if she makes a choice to go stay with her mum. One of these decisions leads to her um, meeting a guy and having a romantic relationship with him and one of the stories that leads to her meeting a female and having a romantic relationship with her. I don't know if this book will tell you what decision she makes. I don't know if it's two separate timelines. I don't know like if it's like in her head what will happen I don't know that much about it I just know it's the two timelines that she's got this choice to make and we are following this girl and it's about what she's supposed to do we're going to dive into this I do believe this is going to be a quick easy read it's like got an indent of like the two different places there which is quite cute so I'm going to pick this up now and as soon as I've got my first update I will let you know. I hope you enjoy this video and find some queer books that you love. If there are any books that I don't read in this video that you can recommend me for any queer reading then please let me know because it is something that I do love to read and I do love to talk about. Welcome to day two of this video. It is 20 past eight and I'm so tired. I got dressed. I've had a shower. I'm dressed, but I'm very cold today. So I'm in a snuggy outfit. It is, I believe it's the 6th of July. It's Thursday the 6th of July. I am absolutely shattered right now. I don't know why. I feel like I am somebody that is constantly going to be tired. So last night I did read more of Going by Coastal and I got to page... 100 and 125 so I read a decent amount of this book last night so it is each chapter is a different it's like a different timeline so think of it as a bit like there's a multiverse in one universe she goes to she stays in New York and meets um Ellie who is a girl that she's kind of seen around and has a bit of a crush on so you get this timeline and then you also get the timeline where 
she goes to stay with her mum in LA for the summer and she meets this guy. Um, I love that they've got the taco truck. So his brother owns a taco truck, which is bros over tacos, which is quite funny. Um, I do, I started out quite enjoying this. And I hate to say it because I've said it over a couple of books recently. I've got a bit bored and I hate to use the term bored because I feel like it's unfair to the writer, but I've lost interest, let's say, at the moment. Um, she kind of has started to connect with both characters. There's more of a love interest with Ellie because she already had that type of crush on her where she's kind of getting to know Adam in this timeline. So it kind of each chapter is back and forth between the two timelines and it's quite simple and easy to follow. It's not overly complicated. It is a good book. It's an easy read. There's a lot of queer representation, not just the main character being bisexual. So we've also got there was a thruple at the beginning who had a baby and it's quite interesting to think about. Imagine having like three parents that are together. Um, because I've got like a stepmom, uh, my dad and my mum. So I do have like what I consider to be three parents, but they aren't in a relationship. And it's just be, I don't know, it feels like it'd be odd to me, but I suppose it's something that, something that should be considered normal in this day and age, I suppose. I don't want to say should be, but you know, um, if people are happy in a thruple, then that's all well and good. It's not something I could personally do. I just wouldn't be able to be in that type of relationship. There's also um, pansexual in this. Um, there is also gay representation. Um, I believe trans as well. Can't remember, but a lot of representation in this book. I did mainly pick up this book because it intrigued me. My, I myself am a bisexual. I have dated men and women. I do have kind of a crush more on women than I do men personally um I I kind of I've dated like my relationships have been more long term with men um and I am in a happy relationship with Josh a male at the moment so it's very like I do find it in a lot of books where the character is bisexual that they lean more towards the same sex relationship. So I did kind of skip to the end to find out how this book is going to end. I know that's really bad to you and it's like I'm not even at the halfway mark yet. And I don't really know how I feel about it yet. I'm not saying that she makes a decision or anything like that or that two, both timelines exist. I think the ending would be too spoilery to discuss. Um, but I will, once I've like finished the whole book, I will talk to you a bit about how I feel about it. I personally, as a bisexual myself, I moved from Bristol, a city where it's very accepted and I mean there's a little bit of like homophobia there, it's a city so you're going to have still some kind of older generations or people that are uncomfortable because it's, it's a big population and I moved to Wales where it's a lot more close minded here, um, there's a lot more misunderstanding um things like that and it's not as easy to discuss with the people i've met here so far there are a few very open-minded um my mum's neighbor for example they are both queer and they uh fit into the lgb lgbtq plus community <laughs> why couldn't i speak this morning um so yeah it's very kind of hit and miss over here in Wales. Anyway, back to the reason I picked up this book. So myself relating to it as a bisexual, but also she's going to these places. This is like her summer. However, I uprooted my life from Bristol to Wales and it makes me think, oh, if I didn't do that, if I followed like a different route, if I moved somewhere else, like who would I be with? What would my life be like? And I don't like to think about that. Like it, 
got some weird feeling in my stomach like I like where I am couldn't imagine my life without Josh so yeah it is an odd one so at page 125 I am going to read some more of this later <laughs> I did film a little bit of an update this morning since this morning I have had some post I love post days I did order all these books as I said at the beginning of the video to come at once um, one of the other books has arrived in the post which is by Julia Armfield and it's Our Wives Under the Sea I did not realize how small a book this was gonna be do you know what I just I was quite surprised at how small this book is um it is 228 pages so this is going to be a very quick read so when Leia finally returns after a deep sea mission that ended at in catastrophe her wife Mary knows that something is wrong whatever happened in the vessel stranded in on the ocean floor Leah has carried part of it with her onto dry land and into their home. As Mary searches for answers for her wife's altered state, she must face the possibility that the woman she loves is slipping from her gap grasp. So I have heard very good things about this book. I have heard it's also a little bit trippy, a little bit dark at times, um, but it's female female um, relationship, which I love. I love do you know what a good love story or romance read between female female I do really enjoy so I just I can't get over how small book this is it's so cute um the cover is beautiful I wouldn't necessarily describe this as cute but I do find it beautiful I possibly will just dive straight into this book next maybe especially because at the moment I am not absolutely loving the book I'm currently reading I am going to split this video into two so this is going to be part one I have realized I've bought so many books there's no way I'm going to include them all in this one video I also ordered this beautiful drinking <laughs> bottle so the Stanley bottle is going around everywhere online at the moment and there's no way I'm going to be someone that spends like 50 pound on a drinking bottle this was actually from um, Amazon it's on um, it's absolutely huge you could get so much in this i saw a different youtuber one that actually had definitely enough money to get the stanley and purchased this loved it so much bought a second one and it's less than half the price of a stanley bottle and it keeps the drink so nice and cool i've got some ribena in here with some ice and it's just so refreshing a good bottle also means that you drink more throughout your day I'm in love with this I love that this part is like thinner so that it means it fits in cup holder still like that is the that is just the cherry on top of these bottles so with this one it's really weird it comes with this thing which apparently is a mug it said like I look I had to check online what this is for because it kind of fits on the bottom here so I suppose you could just keep it on there but I don't know with that one. I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably not use it ever. Hmm. I do know one of the booktubers, Sarah, her videos I watch, oh, she's like my favourite at the moment. She actually has the Stanley in that colour and she's got Harry Styles stickers, like waterproof stickers on hers. And it does make me want to add some stickers, but I'm not going to at the moment. I don't think I'm going to do it, but I want to. <laughs> The last thing that oh, the last thing that came in the post is this. You cannot see what it is, so I will open it and show you. So it is a set of straws, which you can see here, but they've got like little flowers, like little details on the side. I don't know whether you can see that very well, but yeah, they've all got these little gem kind of flower details. They are glass. 
um i just i wanted some cute straws and i just think these are absolutely adorable and some straw cleaners but i've just i've needed some more straws and these are just the cutest thing ever i just hope they're long enough to go in all the glasses i have i'm pretty sure they will be <laughs> i keep thinking i'm in a like reading slump because i keep picking up books that are just not appealing to me so i got to like 170 pages into this and i just wasn't interested i just found myself i didn't care enough it didn't grip like the story wasn't gripping enough wasn't bothered by the characters a lot of what was happening with her relationship with her mum was the same in both timelines in each timeline so i didn't feel like there was enough differences to keep me interested like oh if she'd done that that's how that would have turned out like there was too many similarities i was just a bit uninterested so this is a dnf i'm not going to finish this book i if i'm going to rate it it'd be like a two star so I picked up the next book, which is Our Wives Under the Sea. So this is about um, somebody's wife that goes kind of like, I don't think she goes missing. So she goes, um, she returns after a deep sea mission. So it ended in catastrophic, catastrophe. So something goes wrong and she's come back and she's acting really bizarre, like really odd behavior. And I'm only on page 11. So I've like, I've read two chapters and I'm already like, those two chapters are like five star worthy. So I'm not in a reading slump. I was just really, really not enjoying that book. So I have now DNF'd the first book, which is a great start to this video. I'm onto the second book. And this book, I mean, it's only gonna be like 200 pages. I could even finish this by the end of the day. And 11 pages in, I'm hooked. Like, so, so good. Hopefully, it's going to be a change of pace from here on out in this video. Good morning, everyone. It is July 7th, which means Taylor Swift, Speak Now, Taylor's version, is out right now, today. So we're going to listen to that while we read some more i'm very excited i've been waiting for this love taylor and also loving this book actually i'm roughly around about the halfway mark and i read most of this last night i did not realize when i looked this book up last night after getting kind of like to the halfway mark it is listed as a horror now, I wouldn't personally have picked up this book if I'd known it was a horror. Then again, it's not reading so much like a horror. So there isn't, there's not much of a plot to this book. And yet I'm absolutely loving it. And you may think, mm, but you were bored of books that did have a plot. I don't know. I can't explain myself. However, like I said, there's not much of a plot. So it is the two wives POVs, you only get, so Leah is the wife that went into the submarine and has come back different. You only get her POV for when she's in the submarine. So this is before, um, whilst it was all happening. Um, and then you get Mary's point of view and hers, she kind of tells you what her relationship is like with her wife now and what it was like before Le Leah went away into the submarine. And you get to see like the changes that is her wife is going through. Um, it is just, I love the way this is written. It's more literary. Lit literary fiction that's what it's more like i've got such an itchy nose i do apologize yes so not hugely plot based mostly about the girls the two women's relationship it is super interesting it's kind of a bit trippy and a bit like i don't want to say scary it's not scary but a bit creepy at times and it does set your nerves on edge a little bit but i absolutely love the way this is written i'm so sad it's such a short book i am really excited to see where this is going i almost didn't put it down last night 
so I'm so happy I picked this like this book arrived next because I don't know if it would have been the next book I would have chosen to read but I'm so glad that I that this book came next um because we had a dnf to start this video with and so far the first half of this is five star Shut up. Goodness sake. Do you know what? I wasn't going to get in jammies yet because I knew I wanted to just like film a book update and yet I forgot and then went and got in jammies. Oh, see, I hate, I don't like filming when you can see like this part of my back. I feel like my neck is like so far forward at the moment. Like I used to go to physio and chiropractic and like since I've stopped going, I feel like I hunched like my neck is so far forward. I'm getting a hunchback. I only go to a chiropractor. It's terrible. It's problematic. Mine's a bigger problem. Look at the little cute straw. Yeah, this is fun. Mm. <laughs> Earlier on today, I finished reading Our Wives Under the Sea and it was way more emotional than I expected it to be. Um... The second half of this book is a lot, I don't think it's darker, but it's where you get that kind of little bit more fear, the kind of horror aspect comes into it a little bit more. Look at this, if I put the book like this, it's like, it should, like her head is you. <laughs> Can you see, look? Oh, so <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> so it did not end how I expected it to. And also, I was halfway through this and I was thinking, oh, I wish this was a longer book. I think it could not have been any longer. Like, I think the how emotional it was towards the end and how connected you feel with these characters and then how sorry you feel for them and how scared you feel for them. I think, like, it was the right length. I don't know how to talk about it without giving too much away because there's not, like, a lot of plot to it. So I, I do recommend this book for it being kind of reading these books for like a queer lit readathon. I do recommend this one. It just depends on the type of genre you're able to read. If you do find like hard topics or, you know, quite hard things to deal with or books quite emotional. I, I wouldn't say this is for everyone. Like it is how to explain the book that's like not that I don't know it is deep but it's not deep it's, I think I'd come to terms with what was going to happen before it did but it didn't stop it like hurting or like being as like as any less emotional so this one I'm gonna still give it five I already want to read it again to be honest and I want to annotate it and like write on it and tab it so we're giving this a five star we've gone from like a DNF to a five star so that's good for me yeah I'll give it a five star as well then we got Legends and Lattes by Travis how do you say Baldry Baldry I hate pronouncing people's names. I just feel like I bodge everyone's name that I say. So Legends and Lattes is about an orc that gives up kind of like um, battles and that kind of lifestyle and decides to open up her own coffee shop. I am on, what page am I on? There's no page number, that's helpful. 42. No, 109. Oh, close. We're 42. 
I'll be done. I'm ready to sit around. Um, so yeah, this orc goes to open up her own coffee shop in a town where they don't even know what coffee is. So this orc hires someone like it starts out right at the beginning she picks a place and is building the place up from scratch so she buys some stables off of someone and ends up turning it into a cafe and it's in a place where none of them know what coffee is um her first hire is a succubus and i believe the romantic interest is going to be between the two um, the orc and the succubus which are both female but i'm not 100 percent sure if that is the romantic in like love interest in this book it is very it's very odd reading like a fantasy book that is not got much fantasy elements to it i suppose they're kind of like currency is different um there are still humans wandering around with all of these different types of creatures it is a really sweet book it does remind me like a little bit of um the house in the cerulean sea i think it's called where you've got that kind of real world story however you've got the kind of magical creatures involved in it and it is really sweet really cute um there's not many high stakes however there is a, I want to say a company but I don't know kind of what to call them um there is somebody that is threatening her business um I don't think like she thought to start with they were political and they kind of run the place and they do to an extent where they kind of go around taking money off of all of the businesses to stop like any threat so basically they're going around saying you pay us and we won't ruin your business but yeah i like all the creatures in this it's really cute it's a really sweet story i did go into this hoping i was going to absolutely love it however i don't so far it's not going to be a five star yet i mean i'm almost i don't know like a third of the way in, i'd say maybe and i don't think it's gonna be up there it is sweet i am still enjoying it there's no part of me that would want to put this down i could read this all night long but it's still to me it's not quite a five star at the moment it is a very gloomy and sad day today it's raining outside and i usually quite like the rain i like it being a bit darker putting some lights on putting a jumper on getting a blanket and feeling cozy yeah i usually like it when it's a bit you know dark and gloomy outside but i'm cozy and warm inside but it's just reflecting my mood today i feel really like down and it's, it's not for any particular reason i think I do apologise if you can hear the scrap man yelling outside. Honestly, it's like he doesn't realise that some people work from home. And I have just been like, my anxiety and depression just seem to be hitting a bit harder today. I feel like a little bit emotionally exhausted. I did have like a wonderful day yesterday on my day off with Josh um did go to the cinema with simon connor and it was lovely we did um me and josh played some darts we played we went bowling it was a really lovely day saw the spider-man film um in across the spider-verse absolutely loved it it was so good like i was expecting to enjoy it but i i really loved it that was like one of my favorites of the year so far definitely I did also finish Legends and Lattes and this is by Travis Baldry and I I did really enjoy this. This is a very cosy mystery. There is a little bit of, um, I don't want to call it action, but there is a little bit of kind of adventure side to this, it being a fantasy book. The main part of this being a fantasy is the type of creatures um the different types of like the main character is an orc she also works with a succubus there's like gnomes they're just adorable adorable creatures and um is his name i can't remember his name no 
I want to say thimble, or is it thimble or thicket? I can't remember. And he's just like the cutest thing ever. And he's like one of my absolute favourite characters. And I've completely forgotten his name. Ah, oh, there it was. Thimble. Thimble. Yes. One of my absolute fave characters. I do love on the inside. There's like an illustration. I think that's quite nice. It's quite sweet. Um, it is a very good book. It's very low stakes. Not that much fantasy that you can understand it. There's different like worlds or things like, um, they, I mean, it's a city that they're in. It's just got a different name to it because it's a made up place. The creatures are all living amongst humans and it is... There's not much queerness in this book, although this is part of my queer reading. Um, two female two female characters get together quite near the end, so it is slightly spoilery. There's not any real romance to it. There is cute relationships. It's a very cute story. It's an adorable read, and I'm kind of I do believe there's going to be a second one. I think when I ordered this, it said one of two. I could be wrong, but I think that's true, and I would definitely, definitely read another one. I don't know what to rate this. I'm a bit stuck at the moment. I would say like 3.5, maybe four stars. I'm not quite sure if I love it enough for it to be four stars, but I didn't like not enjoy it enough for it to be three. So maybe a 3.5. I do want to give it a good rating because it is a good book. I just wasn't obsessed with it it isn't like a top favorite I didn't absolutely love it I did enjoy the characters I liked the story it actually made me feel things at times where I was like oh my god what's gonna happen but it wasn't super high stakes or anything like that I don't know if I've rambled but finish this book on to the next one I'm not going to give you an update on what I'm reading next just yet because like I just I need to take five and then we'll come back and maybe later when I don't even know if I'll pick up my next book later if I do I'll update you if not you'll have an update when I pick up the next book at the moment I just feel like I really don't want to do anything and I need to do stuff I'm considering going to the shop tonight I also am considering I don't know Oh, the other thing I needed to do was make some thumbnails. I need to edit. Um, I've got one video ready for the end of this week, but I haven't got anything ready for next week. And it's just, I want to also be promoting my videos, but I just, <laughs> just feels like I'm doing too much and I just can't. I wanted to show you that it's raining outside, but my windows are <laughs> absolutely filthy. <laughs> oh, but I quite like it when it's just... <laughs> A bit dark and gloomy Not all the time I wouldn't want to live somewhere where it was constantly raining yet here we are in the UK <laughs> so last night I picked up the last book I am reading for this video which is Hang the Moon by Alexandra Belfleur this is kind of part of a series there's three books in total the first one was written in the stars which was a female female relationship now it's about one of the girls in the first one her brother so it's a romance between him and her best friend so it's going to be an interesting development look how crazy my hair looks <laughs> oh look i haven't even read that much i'm not that far into it but annie doesn't believe in like love not love she's Annie believes romance is dead so Brendan has decided he's going to spend the next couple of weeks while Annie's visiting because she's only there for two and a bit weeks he's going to spend this time convincing her that love still not exists but romance isn't dead he's going to recreate like romantic gestures or events that happen in movies to show her that romance is still alive and kicking his career he's actually um the owner of a dating app so that makes it quite interesting as well i loved the first part of this book i only got to page 49 yeah 49 so i didn't get that far through but I have loved it. I am so sucked in. I'm on lunch break at the moment, so I'm just going to read a little.
I should also just add in how this is a queer book because it doesn't sound like it's very queer at all. I believe Annie is bisexual but she hasn't come out as that in this book just yet. I know this one is classed as a queer lit so we will find out who the bisexual is but I do believe it is Annie in this book and like I said I'll keep you updated it's a very sweet book so Annie has actually come to surprise her best friend come and stay with her for a little bit and it turns out her best friend isn't currently at home so she's stuck hanging out with the best friend's brother who happens to be absolutely gorge however he pulled up in a smart car I'm sorry but a smart car a no from me <laughs> no disrespect if you own a smart car but for me it's just not the one it's just not to me like a guy pulling up in a smart car and getting out of it that's just not sexy <laughs> I had to go and get the tripod because my arm was aching trying to hold this up. I did also just briefly was oh I just can't stop looking at how crazy my hair is right now. Probably wear a hat tonight when we go shopping. <laughs> um I did also want to briefly mention how I am considering doing a few more videos just like queer related videos about how I feel being a queer person in Wales, how I feel about being a queer person in general, how I spoke to my parents about it, things like that. And maybe like, I don't know. I don't know if I want that to be surrounding this channel, but I don't know if it's going to be helpful or interesting. I'm just not sure. So it is on my list of possible videos I've got a notebook it's over there and there's a list of possible video ideas and it is on there so it is a maybe I'm not sure just putting it out there and now I'm gonna read <laughs> morning I am here with a little update on how far through Hang the Moon so I've got to chapter 11 I believe yeah chapter 11 page 152 so almost at the halfway point now I do apologize if I sound tired it is half past eight in the morning <laughs> Uh, I why am I always so exhausted and it doesn't help that I always feel but when I'm feeling exhausted when I look exhausted but there we go you know I film when I think I've got something to say or I've got the time and I am absolutely loving this book absolutely like oh, I'm loving it so much written in the stars was the first one which was a uh, female female love romance book and I did love that one I did really enjoy it I didn't know how much I was gonna love this I've been waiting to get my hands on this for a while I don't know why I hadn't bought it sooner but so far I cannot say anything bad about it I love these characters Annie and Brendan are absolutely wonderful the Jennifer there was a moment in this book where a cyclist knocks them and they fall into each other and Annie had some like gum in her mouth and she swallows it by accident and it's such a cliche kind of romance moment but I still loved every minute of it like this book is just so well written so Annie is currently decided to take a promotion and is about to move to London so Brendan and his sister Darcy who is Annie's best friend they've both decided they're going to try and convince Annie to stay they're going to convince her how good Seattle is um, Annie currently lives in Philadelphia which is still quite a distance from Seattle but they don't want her to go it's not her dream job she's not obsessed with it she's leaving behind like close friends so they are in the midst of convincing her why she should stay and Brendan has decided to take her on these dates show her around and their connection together is just so adorable but there's some really funny moments like there's some really relatable moments as well because they go on this like 
eye or a wheel, um, which you can see on the book. Um, they go on this and Annie decides she really desperately needs to pee. And Brendan is like, here, have my coffee cup. You're going to have to pee. We're stuck up here. And it's just so funny. But it's also the fact it's just things that would happen in day to day life. That is just so relatable but i am loving this book so much um we've also had a moment where brendan and annie have already kissed and there's like a little bit of tension but she's told him look nothing can happen between us because i'm leaving so there's been that little bit of like moment together and partial separation i'm so excited to see where this goes i can't believe how much i am loving this book to me so far this feels like a perfect romance like a perfect rom rom-com type of book absolutely 100 percent loving it We are here with a final update for this video so i have finished hang the moon by alexandra bellflower and i loved this book i am a bit gutted by the condition of it it's like i don't know if you can see like bits of the book like wearing away in places like i love that it's a floppy book love a floppy book and i like that like i could bend it all the way around things like that but yeah i'm a bit gutted that the cover is coming off a little bit and i hope it doesn't come off too much because i do like a book to be well loved and worn in a little bit but i don't want bits of the cover coming off so i did really enjoy this book there was a couple of moments where i cringed a little bit because there was a bit of like dirty talk um like text messages between the two kind of main characters and it was it did make me cringe a little bit and it wasn't the fact that they were like having these like naughty text messages or dirty or steamy whatever you want to call them it wasn't the fact that they were texting like this because I've got nothing against that is the kind of things he was saying to her that just made me cringe super bad however it happened about twice where i cringed a little bit maybe twice i think maybe three times but it wasn't enough that i didn't love the book like and you know what with romance books it sometimes it's quite often it gets to near the end and it's like wrapping the story up and you get to the epilogue and you're a bit like okay you're done with that romance now i get a bit fed up a bit like okay i don't need what happens afterwards i get that it's happily ever after that's it but even right at the end it was still making me laugh i still wanted to know what was happening i was loving the characters i loved all the relationships between the characters because the two characters that are in written in the stars are in this book this is the second one you can read them as standalones but they're all connected as friendships and then there is a third one which is um between so it's about brendan's kind of like bestie who is now living with annie so it's going to be her love story which is the last book so i th i still think i want to give this five star I, I think like although I cringed a little bit I think I would cringe if like like even one of my friends or somebody that I knew was telling me about their like sexting so in a way like maybe that's just the kind of person I am but I still loved it I think I don't want to mark it down anymore for that this book is like a love letter to Seattle it actually made me really want to go visit Seattle I've never 
like it's never crossed my mind before but this book kind of sold me on the place they were trying to sell annie on the place but they sold me on the place as well and i want to go there i love the romance between these two i loved their story so i am going to give this five star i cannot help myself and it is confirmed that annie is bisexual in this book because i was reading it thinking is there actually any queer representation there was in this video i was planning on doing like whether it was a little q a or some kind of discussion about myself being bisexual and kind of like a little bit of a story on that and i think i'm just gonna leave this as a bookish update we have read three queer books in this video this is going to be a part one i am planning on doing some more kind of queer related videos possibly i've got so many plans i'm just so swamped and busy and exhausted <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this video i read some really good books in this video i mean i've got two new favorites i got two five stars out of this video so it was a success i hope you have a super duper good one thank you so much for sticking around if you watched the entire video and there's so much more to come <laughs> bye